I mean, there's your villain, right? Or or there's your Tony Award. Or if Wait For It wasn't enough, there's another musical number that almost gives you no choice but to root for Burr in this musical. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. I'm Mark Daniel Patrick. Today we're featuring quite possibly the most requested video on this channel by far, and really who could blame anyone for requesting such a song like this. But first, don't forget to join our Patreon page at the link below, subscribe to this channel, turn on those notifications, and you can also find me on Instagram at Mark Daniel Patrick. All right, we're going to start from a quote from the man himself, Lynn manuel Miranda, who said, Wait for it and the room where it happens are the best songs I have written or will ever write in my entire life. And anyone who's a, a fan of this musical can't really help but unequivocally agree. The Room Where It Happens is such a slick, pop, jazzy show tune, and never has 1700s history been so interesting. I'd go as far to say that if Lin-Manuel Miranda was my history teacher in school, I may have retained a chapter or two. I mean, the specifics would be way off, but at least I'd grasp the general concept. And at the center of all this, the smartest thing Lin could have done is give two of his best works to the man leading the audience through it all. Performing The Room Where It Happens, this is Leslie Odom Jr. Ah! Mr. Secretary. Mr. Burr, sir. Hey, did you hear the news about good old General Mercer? No. You know Claremont Street? Yeah. They renamed it after him. The Mercer legacy is secure. Sure. And all he had to do was die. Now that's a lot less work. We ought to give it a try. <laughs> now how are you going to get the debt plan through? I guess I'm going to finally have to listen to you. Okay, so we will in the future, I promise. We'll go through uh, Lin-Manuel's performance in this in this show. I mean, there's no doubt he is an incredible uh, an incredible composer, one of one of the world's best, and it's going to take a while, I think, for us to see uh, another composer like this really come along. Um, but in terms of his performance on stage, I think in the future I'll make a I'll make a video on a little bit more in depth masterclass going through his performance and and seeing what we liked and what we didn't like about it. Um, so maybe if you want to leave in the comments, uh, just if you have any questions or any comments on his performance in the show, throw those in and I'll use those for the future video. But I do really want to. I know I've been getting that question a little bit, and I do want to get to his performance. Uh, but for now, let's just uh, let's enjoy this song. Silly. Talk less, smile more, <laughs> do whatever it takes to get my plan on the Congress floor. Now Madison and Jefferson are merciless. Well, is the sin love the sinner? Hamilton. I'm sorry, Burr, I gotta go. Oh, but um, decisions are happening over dinner. Two Virginians and an immigrant walk into a room diametrically opposed foes. They emerge with a compromise, having open doors that were previously closed. The immigrant emerges with unprecedented financial power, a system he can shape however he wants. The Virginians emerge with the nation's capital. And here's the pièce de résistance. I love how the first 30, 45 seconds of this song, he's laid out what's happened in the entire meeting, and, and it hasn't even happened in the show yet. And it's so smart because it's such a well-documented point in history, um, but for anyone who doesn't have the backstory or have the facts on what went on in that meeting, he's laying it all out for you now, and then he's going to ask questions about it later. So he's sort of already steering you in the, in the direction or the way he wants you to think, uh, and then he's going to ask you questions about it and challenge those thoughts later. No one else was in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. No one else was in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. No one really knows how the game is played, the art of the trade, how the sausage gets made. We just assume that it happens, but no one else is in the room where it happens. So the effectiveness of the ensemble in, in this entire show, really, but in this number specifically, are really what makes this number one of the showstoppers and one of the biggest numbers of the show. We mentioned it in the video about Satisfied as well, how the choreo does such an incredible job of helping its actors tell the story. And this won't be the last time I'll mention the choreo in this video, so so strap in. I mean, I don't know how much a Tony Award weighs, uh, but Andy Blankenbuehler earned every single ounce of that Tony 
in this in this number alone in this entire show but especially in this number his work is just so so incredible Thomas Alexander was on Washington's doorstep one day in distress and disarray. Thomas Paine. Alexander said, I've nowhere else to turn. And basically begged me to join the fray. Thomas Paine. I approached Madison and said, I know you hate him, but let's hear what he has to say. Thomas Paine. Well, I arranged the meeting. I arranged the menu, the venue, the seating. But what else was in the room? Baby, happy. The room, baby, happy. The room, baby, happy. No one really knows how the parties get the yes. The pieces that are sacrificed in every game of chess. We just assume that it happens. But no one else is in the room where it happens. The smile on Burr's face there is just so incredibly perfect. So Leslie, or Aaron Burr, is is sort of our narrator of sorts through this show. Um, And what slowly starts to happen, because he's such a main figure in the storyline as well, he starts to shape or manipulate the way he thinks or the way he wants the audience to start to look at these historical events. So for most of this number, he's like one of those teachers you had in high school where they, they give you all the answers up front, but then they challenge you to dig deeper, form an opinion, but a bad quality of those types of teachers is they start to manipulate and start to to force you to think exactly the way they do and that's kind of what Aaron Burr is doing here uh, in this number Meanwhile Madison is grappling with the fact that not every issue can be settled by committee Meanwhile Congress is fighting over where to put the capital <laughs> It isn't pretty The Jefferson approaches with the dinner and invites and Madison responds with Virginian insight Maybe we can solve one problem with another and win a victory for the southerners and other words oh, a quid pro quo i suppose wouldn't you like to work a little closer to home actually i would well i propose the potomac and you'll provide him his vote well we'll see how it goes let's go no what else is in the room where it happened the room where it happened and so i'm sorry to stop here but much like satisfied we start to see repeats of what we've already seen before So that conversation between Jefferson and Madison, we saw that at the beginning of the number, but because we were in Burr's point of view at the time, we didn't know exactly what was said until now. So one of the genius of Lin-Manuel Miranda is he's able to tell the story from two or three different points of view all in the same number. Now here's where things really start to shift for Burr in in this number. Uh, And that's why I love this character so much, because he's really really one of the most troubled characters we have on stage in this entire show. How he presents himself as a righteous man, a, a man of morals, and a man of honor. But once the the idea starts to float that, that he could have the opportunity to be alone in a room uh, and make decisions that are going to shape a nation forever, and all of a sudden that thought of that power has never tasted so good. And this is where it starts to shift for him uh, in this number. <laughs> Else is in the room where it happened. Alexander Hamilton. What did they say to you to get you to send New York City down the river? Alexander Hamilton. Did Washington know about the dinner? Was the presidential pressure to the Alexander Hamilton. Or did you know even then it doesn't matter where you put the U.S. Capitol? Because we'll have the banks. We're in the same spot. You got more than you gave. And I wanted what I got. When you got skin in the game, you stay in the game. But you don't get a win unless you play in the game. Oh, you get love for it. Look at Burr's face. For it. You get nothing if you win for it, win for it, win. God help and forgive me. I want to build something that's going to outlive me. What do you want, Burr? What do you want, Burr? You stand for nothing, Burr. What are you fought for? I, I want to be in the room where it happens. The room where it happens. I... And again, just before just before they get going here, again, the genius choreo from Andy here. As he starts to bring Leslie into the ensemble here and give him such fluid choreography to, to tell the story he's telling, um, it, it's almost as if, to me, it feels like, uh, you know, all of a sudden Burr has, has, the, has the ensemble like marionettes. Like he's just controlling them and pulling their strings uh, and, and forcing them to, to, you know, to do what he wants. 
that's really the the kind of the sense you get in this in this that that's how he displays the power he wants is by controlling trying to control everyone around him it's also just the final straw here for burr where now hamilton throws it in his face like what are you waiting for what do you want it, it's it's questions he's been asked before throughout this entire show it's that question of do you just want to stand back and and look at the people who have power or do you want to have power yourself and this is now where burr drops every ounce of righteousness he has uh and really just shows his his true colors i want to be in the room where it happens the room where it happens i want to be in the room where it happens i want to be in the room where it Saying what they trade away. We dream of a brand new start. But we dream in the dark for the most part. Leslie absolutely disappears in this part of the number for me. It's so, uh, it, <laughs> he takes Burr into this, this villainous jealousy fit of rage, uh, in the most musical theater way possible. Every villain in any movie ever gets their, gets their one scene, right? That, that one scene where they get to explain what they hate about the world, why their actions are, are justified and who's going to pay the price for them getting what they want. And in the really cheesy ones, they have that long pan out of the villain just, you know, cackling or the, some sinister laugh at, that you can hear in the background. So for me, this is the musical theater equivalent of just that kind of scene. And what makes him convey or, or drive his point home, like any great musical, is some incredible choreography. I mean, Andy gives him fluid moves here that... that they're not recognizable dance steps, right? It's 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 jazz, it's contemporary, it's modern, it's hip hop, all thrown into one, which is such a big part of not just this number, but the whole musical as a whole, where there's no there's no steps you can look at and say, oh, I recognize that step. It's all just a, a mash of so many different styles in together that their one goal in mind is helping the story move along, drive the story, drive the plot, and they do it so incredibly well. It's so, so effective. So I love this ending so much we have to go back and watch it just just one more time for me hold your nose and close your eyes don't get to say on what they trade away but we dream in the dark for the most part Oh, I love that shot too. It's so it's become one of the most iconic shots of of this Hamilton uh, musical being on Disney Plus. That shot there has to be one of the most iconic they've created now. But I mean, there's your villain, right? Or or there's your Tony Award. Or if wait for it wasn't enough, there's another musical number that almost gives you no choice but to root for Burr in this musical. Everyone's just really pulling their weight here. There's no other way to describe it, right? The ensemble, Lin Manuel. Andy, Leslie, they're all coming together here to really make this one of the greatest musical theater numbers you're ever going to see. Okay, that's all the time we have for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment below of what you thought of this video and what you'd like to see in the future. Until next time, I'm Mark Daniel Patrick, and thanks so much for watching. I've got to be here.